Well, good morning. Hope you're doing well, Funnelhead fans. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. We fire up the old all-wheel drive sleigh here, because we are gonna cruise a few hundred miles from where I am sitting currently. Straight out to Illinois today. Moments, Illinois. Now, why are we going there, you wonder? Well, <laughs> stay tuned. Alrighty, now good morning, fun ahead friends and family. We're jumping in the car this morning and we're going on a little road trip. Now that's not necessarily unique. We've done plenty of road trips on the channel before, but what is unique is we are going to somewhat of a Porsche Mecca that's in Moments, Illinois. Now if you know what place that is, comment down below. I'll give you the next 10 seconds to do so. Do you know what it is? Did you guess it? We are going to the famous LN Engineering, which is not that famous in the bigger picture, but in the Porsche community, everyone knows. If you own anything with an M96 or M97, you have certainly heard of LN Engineering, and we have pointed the car straight in that direction today. Now, why are we going there, you ask? Well, it's time for us to get beefy. We are taking my case halves from my M96.04 engine out of my 2001 996 Carrera 4 straight to them so that they can put their Nicosil liners in my engine. As you would have seen in the very recent video, you know that I had a little bit of scuffing on my cylinder walls. They weren't completely scored up yet, but they were scuffed. They weren't gonna go another 100,000 miles. And as I mentioned in the very first episode of this Project Beef series, the whole point of this project is to make this engine the most reliable, the most track worthy it can possibly be. So a huge component of doing that is getting rid of the Locasil cylinder liners and the piston combo that comes in the M96.04, the forged pistons with the ironclad coating that fails and then eventually causes aluminum on aluminum contact, and then you get bore scoring. That is the fatal flaw, well, okay, fine, arguably one of the fatal flaws with the M96.04. And in the case of my engine, well, it was in fact starting to happen. So we're gonna go get the famous LN Engineering Nicosil Nickies, the cylinder liners, installed in my engine. Now, if you're curious how the whole sleeving process works, basically they hog out your old cylinder liners, they then install the new Nicosil lined liners. The case halves then go through a proprietary baking process to hold the sleeves in place. They then deck the cylinders, do some QC, and then they're ready to go to you. So what is the purpose of today's video? Well, I'm not just gonna do a road trip video. I mean, those are, those are fun. I love road trip videos, you know, a little bit of a road trip blog. But the main purpose of this video today is not only to tell you guys that we are on our way to go get this engine beefed up, but also, to just kind of fill you guys in on the process, to let you know what that process is. If you ever want this done to your engine, well, you know, what happens? How do you go about it? Because when you go online, you go to Ellen Engineering's website, you know, they have a fine website. It's very informative from a product to product basis. But then if you want to know, you know, what is the, the process? What do I need to know? What do I need to bring? What needs to be considered? What sort of decisions do you need to make as a customer? Alrighty, now just right off the bat let's reset to square one let's say you are in the same boat as I am where you wanted to re-sleeve your M96 or M97 engine what are your options so let's assume that you've decided that you want to do it the right way and you want to put Nicosil liners in your engine the top companies that, that do it are Ellen Engineering and Hartec, which is in the UK. You can either ship your engine overseas to Hartec in the UK, or there is a company in Oklahoma that Hartec has part partnered with that is kind of their US home base. It's called Slacker Racing Development. Or you can go the route of utilizing Ellen Engineering. Both companies are basically leaders in the industry. So no hard feelings to Hartec. Uh, in fact, we are going to be putting some Hartec components in the engine and we'll talk about that more later. It's gonna be kind of a Frankenstein between Ellen Engineering and Hartec Premium Components. So, once you've picked the company that you wanna work with, well, then it's time to establish contact. And this, fortunately, is very easy. You can get in contact with anyone at any one of these companies, whether it's Ellen, Hartec, Slacker, 
even though these names are well known worldwide within the industry, the industry is small, quite honestly. The community is small. So everyone is very approachable. You can ask anyone questions. I've reached out to people at LN, Partech, and Slacker. They've all gotten back to me very quickly. They've all answered my questions. It's a it's a very tight-knit community and it seems like everyone equally respects each other. So anyway, once you pick your company of choice, reach out to them, establish contact, let them know your intentions as far as what you want to do. From there they can talk about, okay, when's the best time to drop your stuff off? Okay, cool. Got any other questions? All right, let's talk about it. And well, that pretty much leads us up to where we are now. So we will talk later once I get everything dropped off and I know more details. Now we're gonna take a quick break from driving home in the old four-wheel drive sleigh so that I can better explain to you everything that you're going to need to know in order to do this to your engine should you choose Allen Engineering or a lot of the same decisions apply should you choose Hartech slash Slacker as well. So let's get into it. Let me first talk you through my experience with going to Allen Engineering. First of all, you walk straight inside their machine shop. And right there are all of the beautiful machines that they use. Everyone is super nice. I talked to maybe like four different guys in there. What was neat though was I was talking to one of the guys and we took some time to, to look at my case halves. Uh, and they were very impressed that it had 111,000 miles on it and still looked the way it did. Now, of course, they acknowledged that the scuffing was there and you know, it looked good, but not great. But regardless, you know, they loved the fact that the car is a driver. Uh, and has that many miles on it. Anyway, but after talking to those guys in the shop, I went to the office portion of Ellen Engineering and talked with Steven, shout out Steven, he's a great guy, thanks for your help. Uh, basically, he just went over all of the things that they needed to know specifics wise about what I wanted to done to my engine. And we just walked through that step by step. So with that, let's talk about each of those items that he needed to know that you would also need to know if you were to have this done to your engine. First of all, the big one, displacement size. He wanted to know, do I want to keep it to the stock displacement or we can up it in displacement. The most that they would recommend going for a 3.4 liter is up to 3.8 liter. You know, I had my concerns about that, that we talked through them. He was very helpful about that. They suggested about a 10% bump is acceptable with the vehicle's hardware, meaning cams, uh, DME slash ECU, uh, recognition of the larger amount of airflow, uh, sensor specification, all of that can handle uh, 10 to 12 percent increase in airflow. So in the case of the 3.4 liter, it is safe to bump it up to 3.8 liters with the stock hardware. So therefore, I said, let's do it. Let's go ahead and shoot for 3.8 liters. So that's exactly what we're going to do in the case of my build. Very exciting, I know. Okay, so that was the big one. You need to know what displacement size you want to go up to. Now, of course, Hartech has different displacement increases. So familiarize yourself with whatever the company that you're wanting to work with offers. Now to go into a little bit more detail about that, here's a quick table that I made that kind of illustrates what is and is not okay to go up to from your stock displacement. Just looking across the, for the 3.4 liter row, you can see that of course it's okay to keep 3.4 liter. Also Ellen Engineering offers a 3.6 liter displacement and a 3.8 liter. They don't offer any bigger than that because of course you start to run into sensor issues, ECU adjustment issues with that larger amount of airflow. And of course, you know, feel free to hit pause on this chart to be able to look in more detail at whatever displacement your engine has. Th this is specifically the options that LN Engineering offers. Hartech is different, of course, so like I said, familiarize yourself with whatever company you plan to work with in their offerings. All right, so next one, and we'll run down this list pretty quickly, uh, is piston choice. In the case of LN Engineering, they like to have a specific piston to cylinder wall clearance for the cylinders that they install. Even if I were to stay the same displacement, I would, I would probably still have to buy their piston kit, uh, which also includes rings, wrist pins, and clips. So I went with the Mali Motorsport pistons for the 3.8 liter application. Of course, Mali is, uh, 
is a very reputable brand. Next up, connecting rods. You need to decide if you want to retain the stock connecting rods or if you want to upgrade to a forged connecting rod option or a more lightweight connecting rod. In my case, I decided to go with the stock connecting rods. Now we'll talk about that more in detail in a future video, uh, but their big push is, okay, if you're gonna retain the stock connecting rods, make sure you upgrade the uh, connecting rod hardware to ARP hardware. Next up is a lot of a la carte items. Now, first of all, with the choice of going higher displacement, you need to choose specific um, head gaskets. You do need custom head gaskets to allow for the specific application of 3.4 liter to 3.8 liter conversion. Additionally, they do deck the heads and they size the head gasket thickness specific to the amount that they deck off of the heads. IMS gear pinning service is the next one. I did decide to go with that because this is a risk. Basically they go in and check run out of the IMS gear on the IMS shaft, especially in the situation of track usage when you have your engine in a high, st high stress, high heat environment for a very sustained amount of time, you definitely wanna make sure that that gear doesn't go anywhere. Additionally, ARP connecting rod hardware, like I said, we're gonna talk about that more. I might also be applying some other ARP hardware elsewhere in the engine. We'll talk about that more in the future, but that is one option they offer. I didn't actually buy this from them. You can also buy this stuff from FCP Euro or Pelican Parts. They also offer other various Ellen Engineering specific products, um, but I'm not gonna talk about that because that's kind of case by case depending on who you choose to work with. That is basically the entire checklist of everything that you will need to know as far as decisions that need to be made with regards to your engine if you were to have this exact job done to your car. But with that, let's go back to me in the car driving home to close out this video. You guys, I saw some blocks in there though that had been finished with the 101 cylinders. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. I cannot wait to see the end result of my case halves and they're gonna look so good. I'm excited, I hope you're excited. Project Beef is getting weird officially. Things are in motion. I'm gonna go ahead and call it here because yeah, there's not much more else to talk about. We got the case halves dropped off to LN. They're doing the thing. Gotta wait a few weeks. They said eight to 12 weeks. By the time you guys see this, they will probably be just about done. I appreciate you guys being here and watching along. Yes, you, I'm looking right at you. I really appreciate you all being here. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching Fun Ahead TV and I will see you guys in the next episode. Oh, hey Fun Ahead friends and family. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you wanna see even more great Fun Ahead TV content, please click the suggested video right here. I'll see you over there. Ah! Get pitted, so pitted. <laughs>